Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to another episode of The Bat Cave, a series of fast-paced 30-minute political shows aimed at opening the eyes of America to what is currently taking place in our country. I'm your host, Batmobile, and our guest today will be Patriot Pat, an ordained minister who's been with us on the show before, and she recently went to the Occupy Wall Street rally in New York City. She's going to be telling us the truth of what's happening over there compared to the lies that our media and their puppets, the White House occupiers, would have us believe. Welcome to the show, Pat. Thank you, Carlos. How are you doing? Okay, good. Now, uh, we, we'd like to know because you know we keep hearing from everybody in the you know in the media that oh this you know the the whole movement of the Occupy Wall Street thing is spreading. It's it's going all over nation you know nationwide. It's growing. You were down there this last Saturday. Tell us what did you see? Uh, <laughs> it, it was uh, it was a sad mess, but it was contained. You know, it wasn't okay. uh, it wasn't nothing like I thought it was. Um, Okay. And uh, you know, I should have known better myself. But uh, you know, I was, I was grabbing the news every so often, and I'm seeing what's going on down there. And of course, um, everybody was telling me, "Don't go down, don't go down." You know, you, you're going to get, uh, going to get yourself in trouble down there. And um, you know, they had like, uh, you know, the uh, people down there talking about, uh, you know, communism. They're they're waving those signs, you know, communism. Right. And then there was an okay. incident where I saw a, a man carrying a sign that if Christ rises again, let's kill him again. And I, I kind of went bonkers, and I grabbed my purse, and uh, uh-huh. and uh, I was going to go down. And then I saw a flag down there that had a swatch sticker painted on it, and I went pretty bonkers. And I stayed calm. I stayed in. I didn't, I didn't go down. And finally I said, uh, I prayed on it a lot. And I says, I got to go down and see this for myself. I'm tired of listening to the media, right? Uh, because I don't trust I don't trust any of them anymore. And uh, so, like I said, I went down and I was I was shocked. You know, I even had a bodyguard. I had a friend with me. I had a bodyguard. Uh, I had a little protection. And um, the first thing that happened was uh, I got off the train. I go up the stairs. And okay. it's like normal New York City, a normal Saturday on, on, you know, the streets of New York, crowded. This is what a lot of people in the rest of the country don't understand, is New York is always crawling with a lot of people. You know, it's right. 8 million people, and then you've got hundreds of thousands of tourists that come. So the streets are always crowded, especially on a, a Saturday. And uh, so I'm walking, I'm walking and walking. I was waiting for barricades, I was waiting for cattle lines, I was waiting for everything, and there was nothing. And finally when I made it over to where these, uh, you know, these supposed 20,000 people were, um, I found it's a little park. Uh, The park that they're in is a small contained park. It's like a half a block by a half a block by a half a block, half a block, and they're all in there. And... uh, it's it's like a, a normal park that anybody would go to with the playground, with swings and all that, even though it doesn't have that. I'm just trying to compare the size, you know, to a small playground right. compared to a real a real park, like Central Park or, or Prospect Park. Okay. It's, it's like a playground park. That's the size of it. And right. um, that's that's where they all were. And so all the people were they, were they all, see. were they boxed in? Were they, I mean, you know, were they fenced in? How, how are they organized? They were absolutely boxed in. And, um, you know, there were barricades more or less just to contain them even further because um, there's, there's like, a, you know, stone wall going around and then parts of it has fence up. So they are, it, it, and there was a sign hanging. And I did post a picture of it that says okay. uh, uh, pen, pen 5. And I thought to myself, my God, it, it's like a pig pen. Right. You know, it, that's exactly what it looked like, a pig pen. And how many people and, um, would you say uh, that you saw there that were boxed in? There wasn't 20,000. I would say, um, you know, inside there, there was probably about maybe 300, 400 people, but a lot of those people were not part of the protesters. They were in there really? with cameras taking pictures. Yeah, it was gawkers, tourists. And even outside, in the, outside the perimeter, 
Um, it's all tourists, you know, gawkers, people that are down there, uh, you know, visiting New York or, you know, doing their business down there that live down there. That's what's all down there. As I say, when you okay. see these massive crowds, you got to remember that New York looks like that on a normal day with all those right. people. The protesters are inside, and that, I would say at actual protesters with 200 to 250 max. Now, of those 250, what would you say they consisted of? Were they normal people? Were they people that looked like you know, they were stoned? I mean, hippies, what were they? <laughs> well, I went around, um, you know, uh, talking, uh, right. which uh, later on I got in trouble with. But uh, when I first went in, uh, most of the people, I'm going to say most of the people there are homeless people. Okay. And out of the, those homeless people, I would say maybe, uh, 10% are legitimately homeless because they lost their jobs or, you know, something happened to a family member, whatever, you know, uh, they had a tragedy, whatever, and they're homeless now. Right. Um, the rest of them, they're all, um, you know, drug addicts, Okay. Uh, you know, homeless drunks, you know, uh, it's it's like society's downtrodden. That, now, did you, that, see, did you see any evidence of drug use? Like, did you smell pot? Oh, or my God, or yes. First oh, of did. all, pot is smoking, you know, right out in the open. It's very brazen. They're just smoking it right out in the open. And um, when I went back by the tents, because when you're up front, you know, where they're, they're, they're holding the signs up, and it's where, like, most of the people are because it's the main street there. It's Wall Street. So right. the people up front in, in the park, they're holding up signs. They're playing buckets and boxes and drums and whatever the heck, flutes whatever they got their hands on, they're trying to make uh, music for attention. And yeah, it's like they're, they're, trying, they're, with, they're trying to be the hippie. It's like the hippie movement of the 60s. They're trying to bring that back. Well, this is what I'm seeing with the college kids there. I see with the college kids there, and it's all about they're trying to recapture the 60s, you know. Um, right. The sad thing about a lot of the college kids there, because there was a picture, too, I was showing the guys making signs, and he's got like uh, 10 cans of spray paint, which are like about 8 bucks a piece, and I'm like... Pfft. Okay, so you're not hurting for money, but there's uh, right. <clears throat> and and a lot of those college kids there, they're not sleeping there because they're too clean, they're too healthy looking. I know they're going home at night and coming back yeah. during the day to play. Okay, the the ones that are really there, I'm talking about the real ones there. A lot of them were drifters that came in from right. other states. There's a lot of drifters in from other states, um, and it's people down from the Bowery, you know. What is what is driving these people there? I mean, they they are being paid many of these, right? Up to what three hundred, five hundred dollars a what? week? What was? Yeah. I don't believe that they are being paid because of the fact that they're actually selling their own items to try to get money to get more drugs. Oh, they are. Okay. Yeah, the food down there. When I saw the makeshift kitchen down there, and what they were feeding these people, I I, right. I wanted to throw up. I wanted to throw up. But meanwhile, homeless people, derelicts, you know, druggies, drunks, you know, they'll eat whatever they can get for free. Um, and that's right. what was happening. But, I, you know, I heard of all these donations, you know, the Ben and Jerry's and uh, what was it? I think it was Burger King. You know, they're going to donate all this food to them. I did not see one label of any company of donations. I says either, you know, um, Maybe I'm missing it or something, you know. I mean, I, I was in the, I went through the whole place, but I'm saying, where's all these uh, donations at? Um, because they were not there. So I says, well, either the unions got them or their whole whatever. The thing is, I know a lot of these companies donated for advertising, right. but it's not there. It's not there. I see there a lot of church donations. You know, hmm. sleeping bags, pillows, blankets. It's all secondhand. It's all coming from churches, and you know, I see the tubs coming in. Um, the food, right. most of the food that it's coming in, it looks like it's from churches. You know, and, and you know, maybe the unions, uh, these organizers are, you know, taking it, the contributions, giving it to churches. I don't know. But the conditions down there were horrific. Uh, really? The main problem down there, and this is what I don't understand, because anywhere there is any kind of public uh, affair, you know, whether it's a, a parade or a, a uh, any kind of uh, function going on. They always have porta potties. There is yep. no porta potties there. Okay? I'm thinking it's either the mayor is doing it to try to push them out, force them out, so he's not supplying porta potties, 
or he might getting them the uh, might be getting them angry. So, well, this you know, is to actually incite them. the union is probably denying them the, the porta potties to make the area more deplorable, and the mm-hmm. people look you know they're they're more uh, depressed, upset, and easier to anger when you bring in your troublemakers. Right. And, you know, start stuff up and get these people, you know, especially when they're using. Because when you go by the tents, let me tell you something. It's a it's a horror. The stench. Really? Okay, the pot, plus these people cannot get good weed for nothing. And, I, you know, I'm from the old days. I'm like, this stuff was so, so horrible. Mixed with a lot of crack and meth. I smelled a lot of crack and meth. Hold on one wow. second. I'm on the radio. <laughs> well... You know what's interesting about this pot? Anyway, fact, um, uh, let, let me ask. Let me ask you this: Did anybody? Did anybody know when you were down there that uh, that you weren't part of? You know, their their movement, the hippie, uh, whatever these occupiers are. Did they? Did they realize that you were there to try to find out the information of the truth? Well, at first, you know, I went in. Um, the one thing I did, I didn't want to go in like a big, uh, you know, Tea Party uh, terrorist that were accused of being. Um, I wore. Um, a, a flag around my wrist. I always tie a flag around my wrist. And I had a press pass, and I had a clergy um, tag on, and I had a crucifix on, you know. Um, but right. I went in, you know, blue collar, the whole bit, jeans, blue collar, you know, so I'd fit in pretty good. I was wearing a, a money a money uh, bandana <laughs> instead of my okay. usual American flag. And right. when I first went in, it was all good, you know. And then, I, uh, you know, I had the camera going. <laughs> and uh, just trying, you know, just trying to mingle in and get a little accepted there. Um, and then when the, uh, I guess when I went around a second time or maybe I was getting too close to people because I was actually like, you know, going down on the ground with them and stuff, right away these goons came in. And being an ex-teamster myself, I could recognize the teamster when I see them, just like I could recognize a cop when I see them. And these were definitely right. teamsters. And they came in, and um, they were following me around. And when I, I got up, you know, I walked away. I went somewhere else, and I, I realized they were following me. And when I tried to talk to somebody, they were coming up and telling them, do not talk to her. Do not talk to her. And I turned around, and I'm like, what's the problem? He goes, you don't belong here. I said, Did they know you uh, already? or? You know what? I don't know. I really don't know. You know, um, I just felt that they spotted me out and, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Yeah. But the thing was, you know, I, I told them, uh, you know, what's your problem? He says, you don't belong here. And I says, contraire, I do belong here. I says, this is my country. This is my city. I belong exactly. here. And he says, you really need to leave. And I says, I, I don't think so. And I walked away, you know, and I just kind of got lost in the crowd again. And uh, then I'd go back in. And damn it, they weren't on me again. And so I says, all right, you know what? I'm going to stand my ground, but I'm just going to walk around for a while, see if I could lose these guys. No right. way. No way. I couldn't lose them for nothing. And um, every time I went up, because, you know, I'd go up to somebody, I'd see what they're selling. I says, oh, can I see what you're selling? And they walked over and they says, do not talk to her. Do not answer any of her questions. See, they don't want to so be exposed. I, they don't want to be right. exposed for what they are. You know, the, the communists who are here basically uh, being paid and being manipulated by the people at the top to uh, try to overthrow our country. That's the whole goal that's taking place here. Well, I think also, too, because especially when I was back by the tents, they were really on me. Um, because the people, there's people laying out, out cold. They're unconscious. There's people that are sleeping on the ground. They're in their tents, whatever, and they're whacked. Like I said, I, I was able, when I went back there, it was a combination of pot, crystal meth, uh, crack, and, uh, wow. you know, urine and uh, feces. That's, the stench was unbelievable. And uh, the people themselves, the BO back there was really bad. Um, but bottom line is, I knew that if I asked them any questions, either they were too stoned to answer me, they were too messed up, because they were like, like a lot of wild-eyed people there, um, or... Here's the worst part is that there's a lot of mentally ill people there, you know, that wow. are thrown out of city hospitals, living on the street, whether, that's, from, you know, I mean, I see, I see this sad. with my own eyes. Yeah, that's the pretty ones sad, that but, are, you know, they're being caught up. They're basically being used. They're part of that useful idiot bunch. Exactly. Well, I think a lot of people, you know, I think a lot of people 
were drawn to it. I mean, all all uh, the dro- downtrodden were drawn to the place because of the fact it's surrounded by police. There's free food. They're being fed. Um, they're being um, given water. They're given being given clothing. You know, uh, blankets and all that. So I think there's right. a lot of homeless people there because of the fact they feel a little safer sleeping on the street because it's surrounded by cops. They're they're not there at all for the protest. Really? And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I saw there was a lot of runaways. I was talking to some of the kids there, you know, the, the, with the backpacks. I, I think I got a few of those pictures for you. Um, right. They're coming up. You know, they're, they're doing this. Uh, well, we just come to, you know, lend our support. And I'm like, okay, so what are you here for? And, um, you know, they're like, well, I'm just here to, you know, just to hang out, you know. So they're tagging along to belong, you know what I'm saying? That's, did that's you ask, what a lot did of you ask any of them, did you ask any of them if, if they even knew what they were protesting? Because they, they, they didn't I, want I you to do that. to, you know. Like the people outside that were actually having something to protest, I mean, by the way, you had Wall Street there. I don't know if you saw the video with the Asian guys. They're sitting there, like, celebrating capitalism. And then you had people outside that were counter, counter-protesting counter them, you know, with their own signs. So anybody with a sign, I really didn't have to say anything, too, because it's on the sign, what they're there for. Right. You know, but once you go inside, you know, and you got the drum bangers, and, you know, they had this, like, kumbaya circle going on on this rug. And... uh <laughs> There's some guy with, a, you know, a red robe on and a white scarf around his neck looking like a pimp daddy, but he's there playing. I don't know what he was supposed to be, but he got everybody, like, saying something nice to the next person kind of thing going on. Right. Um, and you got people there that are, uh, uh, you know, it looks like they're collecting garbage and they're trying to sell it for drugs. That's what it was. It was like a flea market going on with uh, junk. And uh, <clears throat> when I tried to say, you know, I says, oh, so... What brought you here today? You know, I'm just trying to make conversation. And then these goons came on me. Oh, really? You know, what did they and, say? Uh, you don't, you know, what What are you doing here? I says, I live here. You don't live here. Yeah, I live in New York. This is a park. I'm going through the park. It's a public park, you know. And, you know, they, you, they get in your face, you know, and I, uh, that doesn't bother me. I'm from Brooklyn. Get in my face all you want. And I just told him, I said, you need to step back. You know, you're invading my little space here of America, you know, and this is my right. piece here. Um, and, you know, I, she's a smart ass, she's a bitch. You know, little little comments, whispers to each other, but I could hear it. And I let yeah. it go. You know, I'm letting it go because I know what they're trying to do. The last thing that but, happened, you know. Uh, did you did you I find told, anybody there that was also Tea Party or you know was was in favor of well, our yeah, country and ab- capitalism? Yeah, sure, Carlos. Of course they did because okay. you know then I lost my temper because that's what they were pushing for. Um, and no matter what little whispers uh, going you know behind me because I know they were trying to provoke me. And believe it or not, it takes a real lot to provoke me. Um, but what happened was you know I'm I'm taking video. You know they're getting upset with the pictures and they were like walking past and kind of bumping me or nudging me, you know, and I knew it was them doing it. And right. um, then finally, you know, I'm, I'm videotaping, and then all of a sudden I heard some, I heard a woman's voice. I heard her saying, that preacher is pressed for the tea party. Hmm. So I just turned my head a little to the right, and there was this camera lens. It had to be about 12 inches big. And I turned right in my and he flashed this camera right in my face. Okay. And that's when you know what I had enough. I had enough. I I grabbed hold of the lens, you know, because he he like backed up a little, but I grabbed the lens and I could hear uh, two women laughing, you know, and mm-hmm. I heard one of them say, "Give it to her, give it to her," like she gives it. I'm like, you know, but anyway, I was concentrating on him. And I grabbed the lens and I pulled it down. I pulled it down. I was right in his groin. I pushed it in his groin. And I wrote what I said. I'm not going to say it on the radio what I said. I mean, it was not ladylike. It was not classy. It was total right. Brooklynese. But I'm letting him know, don't mess with me. And then I turned around and I let the two of them have it. And they all kind of like backed off. And um, <laughs> what I didn't realize is that when I looked up, because I'm near the entrance, all these tourists are videotaping me and snapping pictures of me, you know. Oh, really? And, 
yeah, so now I'm embarrassed, you know, because I'm there. I'm like, I'm clergy, and boy, I just let loose worse than a sailor. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> now I'm embarrassed. I want to get, you know, I said, I got to get out of here for a while. I couldn't, my friend and I, we separate back and forth. We got our cell phones to reconnect up at a corner, whatever. So right. I'm trying to go out, and then they're coming up, and they're, they're putting cameras kind of in my face a little bit, and I kind of put my hand up. And they said, no, no, please, you know, um, could you could you talk, you know, like more, could you talk more New York? Can you talk more New York? I love hearing your voice. You know, you got a nice accent. So then this, well, these, these, uh, <laughs> these southern ladies came over to me. I almost died. Because the one, she's like, you know, she says, honey, she says, could, please, please talk in front of my camera. She goes, I want to I hear your accent. It's so cool, you know. And, well, you know what that tells, that tells me? That tells me that tells me that they're basically tourists. It's, it's like people. This is a freak show over there, and people are just that, basically the tourists exactly. want to see what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, she turns around and she goes, "Can can you curse some more like you were just doing?" She goes, "I ain't." She goes, "I ain't never heard nothing like that before." <laughs> <laughs> I started laughing. And I says, "No, no, you know," and. Um, she, oh, because when I was leaving, they're saying, you know, your damn tea party, your damn tea party, you're going down. You know, they made like all these comments, and um, I flipped them my version of Old Glory, you know, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a finger. Uh, right. Just a la- you know, I'm laughing at them because I'm not afraid of them. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I says, uh, no, I don't talk like that. I says, you know, I was, I've been uh, stalked and pressured all day by these people, and. Uh, so she leaned over. She goes, I just want you to know we're Tea Party, too. And I says, well, don't be afraid to say it. And so I said, yeah. you know, and then I saw my girlfriend, and uh, we walked away for a while. You know, I stayed on the outside with the tourists for a while before I tried to go back in. And as soon as I went back in, there were three guys. So I said, you know what, this is not worth it because this is just a clown show anyway. You know, right. it's, it's a sad. I feel that the union... Um, in the organizations that are affiliated with them to get this thing, you know, whatever they're trying to do here, I think that they are using these people. They are using. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. You know, and you know, this is this people. is. Look, Pat, this is this is all being orchestrated from the top. We remember from last year, or was it earlier this? I think it was earlier this year that uh, Zuckerberg is that his name, the uh, the owner of Facebook. He went into the White House you know, several times with meetings with the uh, usurper. And obviously they're basically, they're plotting not only the Arab Spring and everything we're seeing in the Middle East, but all these riots that we're about to see here in America. This is what they're trying to organize. All these rallies are supposed right. to basically evolve into riots. And, you know, right. th- it's not going to work because you're, you just described all the people that are there. Do you really think that these people who are out to, to basically get money so that they can get a fix for their next hit, do you think that these people really want to go out there and start riots? In fact, they're too weak. They just want food or they want drugs, whatever they need. Uh, you know what I'm you saying? You know what? This is what I'm saying. They are not a threat at all um, because they are. It, you know what? I swear, if if it wasn't for the stench, I could have sworn that I was at some kind of uh, love-in. We used to have them every uh, Sunday in Lincoln Park. It's called the love-in. We all used to meet there, bring our kids and, and you know, some uh, stuff to have a little barbecue going and just sharing right. the joints and the and the red mm-hmm. ripple wine. That's what it was like. It was just like a, a, a nobody there. I did not feel threatened physically by right. anybody there except the union. Okay, because they they always send out the big fat boys for some reason and the little girls. And um, I mean, I feel you know, and I live in a safe neighborhood, but I feel a little bit more intimidated walking in my own neighborhood because I see some big Russian guys walking down, you know, like gangsters. Those guys right. just intimidate me a little. There was not one person there that intimidated me, you know, at all. These people do not want, uh, they do, no, they're not going to jump up and start, uh, you know. They'll make a lot of noise if, uh, you know, the teams to send in. And I listen, like I said, I was a teamster. I was a troubleshooter for the FLCIO. I was right. at O'Hare Airport when they had Andy Frame ushers, theater ushers that were doing security. And I went in to get them removed and get our guys in. And I know how it's done. I, I know mm-hmm. what's done. You, you go in and you get your thugs and you go in there and you start the trouble. 
Okay. Well, I think that's that's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to basically put all these, these crowds, which they're paying for, or at least they're telling them they're going to pay them for, give them free food or whatever. And the idea exactly. is to basically try to you know sneak in all these union thugs little by little. And in the end, if there is any violence, it's probably going to be all these commie thugs. The well, unions. you know what? There were there were no the union thugs were just there to keep uh, you know certain people out. And right, might because be they, don't, they don't want to know the truth. They, I mean, if you were to actually interview these people, they'd be like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm here for, you know? So well, I would have loved to, to sit with, yeah, I would have loved to sit with the college kids. The rest of them, um, you know, I wish I would have brought some, uh, something for them to eat or something because they, they have no clue what's going on. They have no clue. Right. Um, that's why they didn't want anybody talking to them because as soon as they would open their mouth, the world would realize, hey, these people, you know, they're not there for anything except uh, to get some free stuff. Exactly. Um, and you would see that they, I, I would say probably 90% of them, there aren't even registered voters. So, And this, these signs, okay, all the signs I saw there, there was nothing uh, to me that was like communism threatening or, you know, uh, I didn't see any flag that was desecrated. Actually, I saw flags that were being flown. Um I, I didn't see anything anti-American this Saturday. I'm saying these guys, what happens is these unions are sending these guys in with these signs to stir up trouble. That's right. exactly what it is. They're trying to set off, and you know what, and it's not even setting off trouble with the people in there. They're trying to set off the people outside, the citizens, the tourists, you know, that's who they're trying well, to set off and so they could start their big riot, film it, because that's another thing people have to realize, because I, I do photography, I do videotography, and like I said, I smacked myself in the head because I'm like, of course, anytime you're in a studio or even filming on a street, you can make it look so much bigger than it actually is. Right. You know, and it's it was very small. It's very small. It's very confined. It's it's like a lockdown, you know. It's, it's like a pig pen. I got them all in this pig pen. And uh, I was able to walk around the rest of the streets with the rest of the tourists, and everybody just had a good time. It's just that when you got to that one little block, that's all it is, that one little block, and then you're there. That's the big the big threat on America. Yeah, that's... Well, see, that's exactly how communists always work. They, You know, their fear is, you know, it's like their bark is a lot worse than their bite. You know, they try to scare people and intimidate people, and that's exactly what they're trying to do here. And they want to see if it'll catch on, but, you know, let's face it, this is not the Middle East. People here are well-fed. They're not going to go out there and riot for no reason at all, especially when they don't even know what they're rioting for or what they're protesting for. Exactly. I mean, it, exactly. What goes on, like, they want, there was a sign, this is our Rome, you know, and I'm like, uh, then there's a, the Egypt, you know, they're put, posting some of those signs that where other riots and stuff were, and I'm like, you know, people, you're not getting shot and killed in the street, okay? You're not starving. You know, basically right now you're not homeless because they're bringing in tarps and tents and, uh, you know, you're, you're shacked up here. This is your life. Uh, yeah, it, it, no comparison. Listen, it's no comparison to me. I'm insulted because I'm like, I'm from the 60s, you know. Right. I, I did the protest. I did the anti-Vietnam. I did the Gloria Simon. I did, uh, you know, anti-disestablishment. And, you know, when we did it, we went to communes and we started growing vegetables, you know. We didn't have phones. No. Like, they're all down there with iPads, iPhones, laptops. I'm like, for yeah. for all the capitalism you people hate, you're sure enjoying it, you know. Exactly, exactly. All right. All right, Pat. So uh, we're, we're starting to run out of time. But, um, okay. you know, I want to thank you for coming on the show. And, uh, you know, this is this Anytime. is really good because what it – what it means is, uh, you know, this is just hype. It's not, it, it's not what the media is telling us. The media, is, they're just basically lying, stretching it out because there's an agenda, you know. Absolutely. Anyway, thank you again, Absolutely. and uh, okay. we're going to leave it there, right? Now, people, uh, I don't want you to fall for the hype because that's what this White House wants us to do. Remember, the regime in the White House has an agenda to bring down the America that we know and our free way of life. So uh, just don't fall for it. Everything will be okay, you know, but we gotta, we got to hang, uh, hang together Stay strong and realize that together we can take back our country and our freedom. Until next time, this is Batmo, and you've been with us in the Batcave. Thank you, and God bless. Mm -hmm.